All right. Great introductions. Thank you all, and thanks again for joining us this afternoon. Uh, thanks to Chris and his team for putting mental health on the map, literally. Uh, you know, uh, Anna Mari was kind of joking when people like she and I learned about mental health care uh, and trained in mental health. We, we, we did learn a lot about Freud. We did not learn that mental health and substance abuse cause more disability than any other major health problem in the world. Uh, you know, uh, if you read uh, carefully the work that Chris and his team have put out over the last decade, you're going to learn that mental health and substance use conditions cause five times more disability than diabetes or heart disease, 25 times more disability than cancer. Now you could say, how could this possibly be true? If I got cancer today, it could really screw up my life, and it might. But most of us get our cancers in our 60s, 70s, and 80s, uh, and uh, those of us who live with mental health and substance abuse disorders, 50% of us present by the time we're 14 years old, and 75% of us, uh, so 75 of us present by the time we're 24 years old. So that means you're living most of your life with what could be a pretty darn disabling conditions. That's sort of the secret behind these super high uh, disability uh, estimates. Um, that doesn't make them any less important. Uh, so now if 25 times more disability than, can than cancer doesn't get your attention, I don't know what will. So I wanna thank you guys again uh, for helping us make this point. Uh, I probably have a little bit of a biased perspective as a psychiatrist, but I have not met a family here in the United States or abroad that hasn't been affected by a mental health or a substance abuse condition at some point in their lives. This is not stuff that discriminates very well. Uh, we are all living it. We are all at risk. Um, in the United States, we now have one suicide every 13 minutes. There are more people dying from suicide than from, from homicides or motor vehicle accidents. We have one death from a drug overdose every eight minutes. Uh, last year alone, there are more people who died from a drug overdose in this country than all the Americans that died in the Vietnam War. Think about that. That's pretty amazing in a bad way. Uh, we are a very rich country here, but even in rich countries, we actually have tremendous challenges when it comes to access to mental health care. So if I'm a person who lives with a serious mental disorder uh, in this country today, uh, what is the likelihood that I'll see a psychiatrist uh, or any kind of mental health professional over the next 12 months? Somewhere between 10 and 20%. So what if this was cancer? What if I had to tell you that if all of us in this room had cancer today, one or two out of 10 will get to see a cancer doctor in the next, you know, in the next 12 months. That's hard to imagine, right? But that's pretty much where we are in a very, in a very rich country. Yesterday we heard that if you go to a country like Liberia, there is one psychiatrist for an entire country. So we have huge challenges with workforce, with availability of treatments and so on. Our psychiatry department here at UW serves is the only academic psychiatry department for a five-state region that covers a quarter of the landmass of the continental United States. That's a huge area. And if you look at the counties in this vast area, uh, well over half of them don't have a single person in them that has any kind of training in mental health care, psychiatry, psychology, social work, anybody who says I've had some training uh, to deal with mental health problems, fewer than 50%. Uh, of the counties in this region could have even one person like this. We are run one of the largest psychiatry training programs in the world here at UW, but we're never gonna train our way out of this. We're never gonna have enough psychiatrists and psychologists and specialists. So we have to not just work harder, we have to work smarter. We have to think about what are all the ways in which we could take the human capital and the technology that we now have and leverage that in a way that we can really reach more people. Uh, who need uh, mental health and substance abuse help. Uh, we are fortunate uh, here at UW to have strong programs in global health, in psychology, in psychiatry, and we have technologies, simple technologies. This thing, somebody told me the other day that this has more computing power than NASA had when they sent a man to the moon, which is pretty mind boggling, right? But that thing can also take every single person in this room, if you're a mental health professional, virtually anywhere in the world, because there's 7 billion people who have one of these. So there's things that we could have never, never dreamt about, uh, you know, when we trained in psychiatry 20 or 30 years ago. 
Over the past few years, we have started to pull together here at UW some of these strengths we have to build a new program in global mental health. It's a great partnership between our departments of global health and psychiatry with lots of input from other parts of the university. And that's one of the beautiful things of being part of a very large university like this. We have social workers and pharmacists and psychologists and educators and lawyers who have an interest in this. And when we all get together and we put our heads together to say, what is it that we could do? We have people in a beautiful building, uh, you know, computer scientists, uh, they can tell us what we can do with technology that those of us who are trained to do traditional psychotherapy sessions could never even think about. But if we put our heads together, we can do things that are really mind boggling. Uh, and we have recruited a great new leader in Pamela Collins uh, to help us move forward this important work. So I thank you for joining us today. Uh, let's see what we can do together to improve mental health around the globe. And now it's my great pleasure to ask uh, Judy Wasserheit, uh, 